Today we're going to be looking at giving and reading directions in terms of our left and right, moving forwards and backwards, turning clockwise and anti-clockwise, and turning using quarter turns and half turns. For quarter turns and half turns, we'll be using our knowledge of fractions that we have learnt already. First of all, we're going to look at a good way to remember your left and your right. So one way is to put your hand out in front of you as shown in the picture and see which one shows an L between your forefinger and your thumb. You can see that on your left hand, this draws an L across there, whereas if you try to do this on your right hand, the L would be backwards. Therefore, your left hand is this one here. Your right hand is the other one. Another way you can remember this is by simply remembering which hand you write with, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. If you're right-handed, then you know that the hand that you write with is your right side. So we now know that when someone tells us to take a left turn, this is turning towards our left hand, and if they tell us to take a right turn, that is turning towards our right hand. Another way to talk about which direction we turn in is to refer to it as clockwise or anticlockwise. These words are referring to the way in which a hand would turn on a clock. Since we've just been learning about time and clock, we know that the hands of a clock move this way around the clock. They move to the right. This is known as clockwise. Because of this, we also now know that anti-clockwise is the opposite of clockwise because anti means opposite. And so when we're moving anti-clockwise, we move the other way. Because we know our left and right, we know that left is the same as saying anti-clockwise and right is the same as saying clockwise. So now we know how to tell people which direction to turn in, we now need to tell them how much to turn by. If we ask someone to make a full turn, this would mean turning all the way around until they arrive back in the same place again. Like this. If we were to ask someone to move half of that, so make a half turn, they would turn to face the opposite way that they are currently facing. Like this. Making another half turn would bring them back to the beginning of where they were before. Completing a full turn. From our fractions work, we know that a quarter is half of a half. So if we were to ask someone to make a quarter turn, this would be halfway between the front and a half turn. So they would turn halfway between those until they get to here. This would be a quarter turn. From here, a half turn would be going and turning around until you got to the opposite of where you started, here. Now, when we move quarter turns, we have to be specific in which direction we want the person to turn. Because a quarter turn could either be turning a quarter this way, or starting again from the beginning, a quarter this way. So we need to let the person know which way we want them to turn so they're facing the right direction. Let's practice reading some directions and learning quarter turns clockwise, anti-clockwise, half turns and moving forwards and backwards. So here we have a list of directions that we're going to read and follow. If you want to take a moment now to pause this video and try and work out for yourself which square you think the arrow will land on. Okay, so our first instruction is to move four steps forward. So we're going to do that. We're going to take our arrow, we're going to move four boxes. One, two, three, four. It then tells us to make a quarter turn clockwise. So we think back to which way is clockwise and anti-clockwise. Clockwise are also known as right is this way around. And since it asks for a quarter turn in direction, we're going to move a quarter of the way around and we have completed that direction. The next step asks us to move three steps forward. So we're going to move forward one, two, three. And then you can take that one off because we've just completed that instruction. And it asks us to make a quarter turn again, this time anti-clockwise. So we know that the clock hand would move this way around. However, it's asking for anti-clockwise. So we're now going to turn in this direction. So we take a quarter turn anti-clockwise this time. And then our last instruction is to move one step forward. And so we land on the book square and that is our answer. This time we've started in a new place and we've got more instructions now to follow our directions. Again, if you'd like to take a moment to pause this and see if you can work out which square we'll land on. Okay, so our first instruction is to make a half turn. Now, when it's a half turn, it doesn't matter whether this is clockwise or anti-clockwise because you will always end up in the same direction, which is the opposite of the way you're facing. So currently, 
we are facing this way. To make a half turn, we are going to finish facing this way. So we're going to make our half turn. And we are now facing towards the dog. Our next step is to move one step forward. So we'll do that. We'll take one step forward and then we need to make a quarter turn clockwise. So we remember clockwise is the same way that the hands would turn on a clock. So we're turning this way around. This is a quarter turn. So we're going to be turning a quarter of the way around to face the bird. We then move one step forward. And we're going to make a quarter turn anti-clockwise. Remember, anti-clockwise is the opposite way that the hand would be turning on a clock. And so we're going to turn this way around, or to your left. Let's turn a quarter of the way around. We're now facing the apple. We then move two steps forward. And we're going to make a quarter turn clockwise. That's the way that the hands turn on the clock. And then our final instruction is to move three steps forward. So we move one, two, three, and we've landed on the duck. So if you guess duck, well done, give yourself a tick. You can also practice giving and following directions by working with someone at home. You can give them a list of directions and see if they can follow them, turning them clockwise, anti-clockwise, left, right, half turns, quarter turns, moving forward and backwards. Or you could even set up a little obstacle course and see if you can guide them through it without them bumping into anything. You can use this video to help you with the task we're going to set you for giving and following directions. As always, please feel free to reach out to your class teacher with any questions you might have surrounding this. Thank you for watching.